as, you know, many people feel that just the fact that I attend church, I'm involved in the church activities, I do the things I'm in a group, you know, and I know the church language. I can say, when I speak, I speak like someone that is in church, you know, would already make me to be a born again child of God. That means I'm a I mean, I'm a child of God, but no, it doesn't. Praise the Lord. Um, our main text is going to be from 1 John 5. Um, it is important for us to note that the Christian life is a victorious life. That is the purpose of God. The minute you gave your life to Christ, you accepted Jesus into your heart. The package was that you were going to live a victorious life. Nothing less than that. Nothing less than that. So unless someone has assurance of salvation and a basic security in his or her relationship with Christ, it is important for him or her to live a victorious Christian life. You just have to it's impossible. It is possible. Impossible, sorry. It is impossible for him or her to live a victorious Christian life. So it's it, because I mean if you are doubting your salvation, if you are not sure about your salvation, then how can you even live a victorious life that is expected of a believer? Praise the Lord. So that's why it's very important. An insecure life is full of doubt, is full of unbelief. But First John chapter 5, the entirety of chapter 5, First John 5, is the assurance of salvation chapter in God's word. So I'm going to encourage everyone, because even after this lesson, go back. That first John chapter 5, from verse 1 right through to the end, is the assurance of God's salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this is what is written there. The ESV version. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So we are going to be looking at the different aspects of this um, as we move on. So the very first thing we want to look at this morning is how to be saved. How to be saved. So what if coming to church, if being born into the church is not the same as being saved. If coming to church, participating in church activities, belonging to a group, does not mean that I am saved. So how can I be saved? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9, 11, uh, 9 to 11 makes this very clear. It says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. So, in other words, there must be an exchange of words. There must be some utterances. You know, you have to utter words. You cannot claim to be born again if you have not uttered words. And what are the words that you utter? You have to confess with your mouth. You have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. That God sent Jesus to die for my sins, not the sins of the world. I think it's Pastor that gave an example one time and talked about a very elderly man in the church that, you know, he has been attending church all his life. And then one day, a particular preacher came. And people were surprised. By the time the man made, the preacher made the altar call, this elderly man came out to give his life. Well, you know, and when the man was given a chance to talk, what he said was that all this while, when other people come to preach, they say, also, we are all sinners, you know, so he assumed that, okay, all of us in the church are sinners, you know, and we need to give our lives to Christ and all of that. Since nobody is doing anything or saying anything, we all assume, he assumed that we were all like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Until that, part that particular preacher came and said, for you, you, 
and many personalize that you need salvation. You need salvation. And then before the old dead man realized, wow, I'm so willing, I actually need to confess Jesus as my Lord. So we need to believe that God sent Jesus to die for my sins. And after we have done that, we need to also accept him into our heart and thank him for what he has done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is how to be saved. Now, two ways you can be assured of your salvation is confirmed by God's word and then confirmed by your actions. So I'll need people to help uh, in reading the scriptures for us. The first, uh, on that being confirmed by God's word, how else, how, from God's word, how can I know, how can I be assured that yes, this my salvation is a real thing? So the first one is assurance by believing in Christ. So I need someone to quickly open First John 5 and read verse 1. First John 5 and read verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, the born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him, Amen. Whoever believes, whoever believes, that's that's the foundation. Do you believe that Jesus is sin, that Jesus came and died? This, this has the assurance from God's word that we have of our salvation. And then we have by your love, your love for Christ. First John 5, 1 to 3. First John 5, 1 to 3. Prince, just read through since you're already there. <coughs> okay, 1 to 3. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, the born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who begot of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Amen. Amen. You notice the B part of verse 1 says, And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. And it keeps talking about love, love, love right there. So your love for Christ is one way you can be assured that yes, I'm saved. Then by knowledge, first John 5, 13 to 15. 13 to 15, okay, I'll read that. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of Jesus. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hear it us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we are the petitions that we desired of Him. It says, by knowledge, the verse 13 is the main thing. It says, that you may know that you have eternal life. These things are by written unto you. So the things that have been written unto us from the Bible, the assurances, the, so that we would know that yes, we are truly saved. Hallelujah. So by knowledge, in the word of God, or the word of God, we know that we are saved. And finally, by God's love. Every child of God knows this. Every Christian knows this. John 3, 16. Can we all say that together? God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have the last in life. Amen. Amen. And Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, by all of this, from the word of God, we can be assured of our salvation. And the second way we can be assured of our salvation is by our actions. By our actions. So you see God part, and then we are looking at our part now by our actions. Assurance by your new way of life. Second Corinthians 5.17 is another, another popular scripture book. Can someone be clear for us really? Second Corinthians 5. 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. The old, all things have become new. All things have become new. So we have uh, the fact that, look, we, we, we were, there was a certain life that we had before Christ. And then the minute Christ came in, the Bible says, all things are passed away. 
behold, all things have become new. Mm. So we have a new life. There is a new life that we have in Christ, the minute we give our life to Christ. So this is an assurance of our faith. And then changing your way of life, both are kind of uh, similar, you know, changing your way of life towards God and towards others. This is the great commandment, Matthew 22, uh, 36 to 40. I'll quickly read that, Matthew 20. So if anyone is there, they can help us. Teacher. Anyway. <laughs> Teacher, this, this is the greatest commandment in the law. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. With all your mind. So there is no way you have the love of God in the inside of you that your lifestyle will be affected. That there is no way. There is no way. I remember when I gave my life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ in high school. When I was in high school, probably my final year in, in, in school. You know, and then um by the time I went to college and God planted me in the church. <laughs> God planted me in the church and that's where I grew. And I remember the first time I came back home, my first vacation back home. And I can't remember what it was that I did, you know, but my dad came back home and was like, who did this? You know, and was accusing, I wasn't there when was, you know, my younger ones. What is this? I'm not even, are you sure? You know, so, and then when I came into the, the, the room and I had him ask the question, I just raised my hand and I told him that I'm the one that did it, I'm so sorry. You know, and I was surprised, he was touched. And the next thing he did was he looked at my younger ones. He said, maybe you should be more like your sister. You know, I can't remember the words exactly that he said, but that's, left an impression in my heart, you know, because this is something that without batching, you know, batting an eye, I would have lied. <laughs> Praise the Lord, the old life. Would the, I don't know, you know, children, we all did that. We are all guilty of it. We did that. Lying was like a part of our nature. It was our nature before we got to know Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So all things have passed away. The love of God is in our heart, and the love of God changes us from the inside. It changes us from the inside. And then, you know, our lifestyle, it just changes. It changes completely. So with these two ways, we can be assured of our salvation. Confirm, confirmation from the word, the word of God, and of course, by our own actions as well. Praise the Lord. Um, Romans 8.1. Can someone quickly read that for us? I think the next slide has it, I'm not sure. Yeah, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set them free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there is no condemnation in Christ. There is no condemnation in Christ. Now, I believe every one of us that gave our lives to Christ, we remember this. The very first time you slept, the very first time you told him, and after you had given your life to Christ, you had gone to church faithfully. You know, you had, you, there was joy in your heart, I'm a child of God, I'm born again. And then something happened, you lied. Or something happened, it's like, wow, you, you know, you passed. But lying is one of the most common, you know. And you will start having that guilt in your heart. And then the devil comes and says, hey, hey, children of God, don't lie. You have lied. So, and you say you're a child of God. God won't forgive that at all. You know, and then he, he condemns us. You know, there are two ways that you can go about this. You know yourself in Christ. And you know that, look, there is no condemnation. 
God has already made an arrangement for that. The fact that I have a new way of life, that I I am born again now, does not mean it's going to be smooth sailing. No, it doesn't mean that. I mean, if our children that are learning to walk, they stumble and they fall, we don't hit them over the head. You don't hit a one year old. Look, you don't know how to walk. Look, is it not how to walk? Why are you walking and falling like that? You know, you don't do that. You pick up a child. It's okay. You do. You don't worry. Just take another. You encourage the child. You encourage the, the child. The direction of your work is a telltale sign to God. If you say you are God's child and they refuse to do His will, that amounts to self deception. I'll come back to that in a bit. Now, the fact that you are born again, you are now a child of God, does not mean you will walk perfectly with your first step. The devil will always be ready. The Bible calls them the accuser of the brethren. He's ever ready. Or he's just waiting. Once you slip up like this, he appears. And starts the condemnation. Starts the guilt tree. Yeah, and you call yourself the child of God. Mm -hmm. You know what? Even, I'm sure God has even told the pastor of this thing that you are committing. You know, and then you come to church and the pastor is preaching and he's like, hey! They told him, oh. you know. Or, you know, it just starts People saw you, you thought nobody saw you, this person saw you, that person saw you. You know, so the devil tries to discourage every step of the way. He tells you are no God's child. He lies. You know, but we should know that there is no father that will think of condemning his child who stumbles and falls. You know, and if the earthly father does, doesn't do that, how much more are God? He wouldn't do that. He, he wouldn't do that at all. He won't cast off his children that fall and fall. He has made an abundant provision for us to get back in our feet in the time before. So we must know this and not allow ourselves to live under the condemnation of the devil. To live under the condemnation of the enemy. Just tell the child, my father will forgive me. And then you go to your father and ask for his forgiveness and he's ever ready to forgive us. Praise the Lord. Right, yeah. So a quick summary of what, please can you go back to the first slide, uh, link the slide before it. The direction of our life is a utility. So you can't say you are refuse to do his will. This is important. We'll talk about this more in part two. There is no way, I mean, it's, it's your meat, just like Jesus said, that my meat is to do your will. This, well, this is the reason I was sent. He kept saying that, he kept, you know, wherever you are here, he kept stating his mission statement. He kept telling people, this is why I'm here. This is what God wants me to do. So, as a child of God, there is no way you can say that. Okay, I'm not going to do this way because I am a child of God. No, those are two parallels. You are a child of God and you do it so. So the summary before the part of this lesson, um, again, the main text was 1 John 5, 1 to 5. Um, salvation is by believing and confessing. You must believe. You must confess. So whether you do it publicly in a church like some people do, or you do it at a fellowship or a, you know, like I did when I was in school, it was a scripture union fellowship and I came out in front of my friends, in front of my classmates, my junior uh, juniors in, in school and I gave my life to Christ. All you hear about it, you are convinced in your heart, you go back in your pregnancy and you raise your hand before God and you open your mouth to say, Lord, I accept you into whatever way, there must be a believing and there must be a confessor. Praise the word. Uh, we have also looked at assurance of salvation through the word. Uh, God's word is love for us. Uh, we've seen the assurance of salvation by our own actions. By our own actions, our lifestyle. There's a change in our lifestyle. And then the great commandment that we love the Lord our God. You can't, you cannot say you are a child of God when you don't have love for God. Again, you look more into that in the second part as well. And finally, it is important for us to note that there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.